Hello everyone and welcome to a video that is strictly on the Archive channel. My name is Adam and today I will be doing a video for you guys um, which is actually ranking all the What's New Scooby-Doo Monsters Lucas's version. Um, so Lucas, the great lord he is, has decided that he does not want to do any more Scooby-Doo episodes. So... He said if he wanted my if he wanted his versions of uh, no, sorry if I want his versions of the uh, final list which he said he would do um on my channel uh on the archive channel I meant I would need to host them myself and just narrate his uh things was also narrate his um list was also given what I think is his opinion on each of these um, monsters. The same thing will happen with the episodes, culprits and chase scenes. Um, I agreed because um, if you have one opinion, you guys have the other, right? Um, however, um, with uh, those would be just top 10s because um, I'm not talking about 42 uh, episodes in one episode, in one, vi in two separate videos. Um, because uh, as much as I love Scooby-Doo, there are some episodes which I'd rather talk about once and never again. Um, but with that, let's get into this. Now, bear in mind, this is Lucas's opinion. So if your opinion is different, please leave in the comments below why you think that. However, in this one, I probably will be um, disgracing him with his opinion. Because I did warn him, chances are I would do this. And uh, obviously I'm going to do it. Um, now, if I sound a bit upset that I am um, doing... Uh, this video, I, I, I'm I not. I said yes to doing it after he asked if I would be okay with doing it. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Because I agreed to do it. I don't mind doing it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it. Yeah. So in 42nd place, we have the Mystery Inc. clones. Now, the Mystery Inc. clones, they are Lucas's last place. Because in his opinion... They are not very creative of monsters, and it's kind. Of, and they think, and he thinks it's kind of a lazy idea to have the monsters um, be uh, essentially the main heroes, as it could get confusing for the viewer. But also, um, kind of a uh, well, it's just a lackluster whole monster. Was I agree with some aspects? I personally think, even though it's a bit simplistic. I think it's a good monster because um like uh like with the mystery machine for example I like it because um it's a monster you wouldn't expect that's so normally on the good side and uh to have uh clones of the good guys um I think is a great way to frame them and put them in jail uh which um actually works to an extent so um I have absolutely no problem with these but I do understand why Lucas doesn't like them do I agree with this reason? No, but uh, I'm gonna need to deal with it. Damn right. Forty-first place, we have the toys. So we have the uh, the Barbie lookalikes. I don't remember their names. The toy soldiers and Spaceman Swinton. Um, so the toys. Uh, well, I'm <laughs> Lucas can agree with me here. Uh, they are crap. Um, <laughs> and he agrees as well because they. They're honestly not that intimidating. And, um, oh yeah, by the way, uh, Lucas is ranking it on destructiveness, uh, memorability, and um, his own personal opinion. But with um, the toys, was they do stick out as a monster that we remember. Um, it's not for good reason. Because, um, well, for me, the toys are just boring and... Uh, don't really do much at all apart from just uh, chase the gang around, which is kind of lame. Whilst for Lucas, I'd assume it's for the same reason as a grown man would not run away from a ton of toys. 40th place, we have... Now, I really regret... I really don't like putting this up here. But Cold Steel. Whilst I did have Cold Steel low on my list, uh, on my list, um, I put it relatively... Low, lower that lower than half place, but high low. If that makes sense, um, but that's because I have a bit of nostalgia towards it. 
Now, Cold Steel is 40th place for Lucas because I think it's just... Um, it, well, it is essentially just a robot cowboy, which is a bit simplistic in design and a bit boring. And compared to the monsters, it's sandwiched between, which are the... Um, which is the Creepy Keeper and... Um, crap, what was the other one? Yes, it was um, the Titanic Twist. So he's sandwiched between Titanic Twist and the Creepy Keeper. Both very good monsters. Oh, okay, monsters. Um, hence why Cold Steel gets the short end of the stick here, because he's just sandwiched between two better monsters. Um, moving on to 39th place. Now I need to find a picture. Uh, stop. First in ninth place, we have the Centaur. Now, um, Luke. Now, Luke. This was originally going to be a bit higher on Lucas's list, but when he um, remembered that it's just a regular Centaur and doesn't do much, and essentially just a plot convenience, um, he moved it down to first in ninth place because, with my opinion, it's crap. I like my Centaurs, but this Centaur is an utter embarrassment. And uh, I don't say that very often, but um, I mean it this time. But uh, that's all I can really say about the centaur. As um, I can't, I don't really, I can't say Luke's exact opinion here. <laughs> but um, thirty eighth place, we have my least favorite monster, the jungle demons. Now, with how Lucas is ranking them with destructiveness and mem memorableness, um, the Jungle Demons are more memorable than the monsters that I said before them. So, I do understand why they are there. But um, with destructiveness, the toys are arguably more destructive than them. Uh, but Jungle Demons, it's just animals painted yellow. And I think that's the same reason for Lucas why he put it this low. Because of my general dislike for them. It may have rubbed on on Lucas. But then again he doesn't like the monster either. Uh, 37th place we have the Ossamons. It's fun time! It's fight time! It's fight time! Now, I absolutely love the Ossamons, so my opinion on them does not mean that does not did not make Lucas hate them. And if it did, then honestly I find that more impressive than upsetting. Um But with the Ossamons, unfortunately, uh I think the reason why he doesn't like them is because there's like a sh shit ton of them. Sorry for the bad language, but there's a ton of them. Um and they're all little blue balls. They all look exactly the same. If they all, if they had a bit of indiv individuality, then it would have been a bit better. But uh, which I agree with, it would have done. Um, however, because the worst thing they do is flood a car park and destroy a building, kinda. Um, it is at the end of the day just a simulation. So these monsters wouldn't actually kill you. So, uh, whilst the other monsters could and probably would, especially the Jungle Demons and the one after the Ossamons, um, it, they won't, because, uh, they're a simulation put, created by the culprit, and, uh, I'm not gonna say anymore, but, um, they just, like the centaur, it just seems like a plot convenience, and I think that's why Lucas puts it at 37th place. In 36th place, we have the 30-foot Shaggy. Um, now, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to spend too much time on the 30-foot Shaggy because um, Luke's opinion is the same as mine. It's a... F oh, almost said a bad word there. It's, a just, it's just a giant plot hole. Um, and I'm not going to go into that plot hole discussion because I already mentioned it. Four times in four previous videos this year. The episode ranking for season two. The monster ranking for season two. The culprit ranking for season two. And the mo my monster ranking. Um, so I've had enough with saying the plot hole with the 30 foot shaggy. 
Um, so if you really want to know what that plot hole is, watch the episode or watch one of those previous videos. Uh, sorry if I sound a bit snappy here, but uh, <laughs> um, I'm that plot hole legitimately pisses me off. Um, and uh, it's a plot hole that not even Lucas can count contradicts because he knows I'm right with this. Anyway, 35th place is Jeeves. Like, thanks, Jeeves. You're welcome. Let's take our trash. Now, um, a part of me wishes Jeeves was a bit higher on the list because he has the greatest name I've ever seen for a monster. But um, another part of me is just like, yeah, Jeeves is just um, a puppet with strings, let's say. That is essentially what Jeeves is. Um, and Jeeves doesn't do much destruction. He just uh, shuts down the house and chases a bunch of people around the house. That's it. 34th place, we have the Coral Creature. Now, the reason why I think Lucas put this up uh, relatively high is because um, the coral creature, unlike the other monsters here, is an actual monster. Uh, I'm There you are. Uh, I'm trying to find the next monster, by the way. Uh, he's an actual monster, and that's probably the reason why he put the coral creature up um, this as high as it is, because it's an actual monster. It doesn't mean to cause destruction, it's just, its habitat has just been disturbed and it just got driven out of the sea. Um, so this, this monster wasn't part of the culprit's plan, but he used it in a way for where he would make the monster responsible for it when really it's done nothing wrong. Um, but it doesn't change the fact I still personally don't like it. 33rd place, we have the Wakumi. Now, whilst I'm a bit upset that Wakumi is relatively low on the list, I need to be grateful it's higher than I thought it would be. Because I know that Wakumi is a very unpopular monster. And Lucas has expressed his dislike for that monster during the episode. Um, do I need to go into that discussion again? Because I will. Oh yeah, I probably will later in this video as well. Um, but um, the Wakumi... Uh, I think he gives a bit of appreciation for because um, one, unlike the others, it's uh, it's a bloody bird, uh, which yeah maybe a bit ba maybe a bit of a negative, which it probably is for Lucas, but um, it's more creative of a design compared to some of the previous monsters I mentioned, especially the centaur and the toys. Um, but um, another thing about the Wakumi, which I think Lucas may like about may have liked about it. Is the um, is the whole fact that um, it's not destructive per se. It's more like a bouncer or a bodyguard to keep people from climbing up the mountain. Um, so it's not a monster to like take people away. It's a monster that would take people away if they get too high. Um, and it's just to scare them away, which um. I think it's just an all right. I think it's an all right motive, but um, the reason why I like the Wakumi is because of the chase scene. So, and I know Lucas doesn't really like the chase scene because it was relatively low on his season season two chase scene ranking. I should know because I watched it. Um, I was not happy with that, by the way. Uh, I feel like I think his fish fiend chase scene was also relatively low, which also upset me. But it's fine. It's fine. It's in the past. I'm just not over it yet. So um. Okay, there goes my COVID test kit. Okay. So, okay, so I need to get a new COVID test kit. Okay. Uh, 32nd place, we have the vampire. Now, with the vampire, um, it's, it's literally the most stereotypical monster out of all the monsters here. So that's why it's relatively low for him. But um, with the vampire as well... I think it do the reason why it's high it's relatively high-ish on this list is because um uh well there's two of them and it didn't and it didn't click in my head and probably Lucas's head until we real until we saw both of them together. Um but yeah, that's why the vampire is up this high because um yeah uh, there's really not much else I can say about the vampire, really. 
Firstly, first place, we have the Gargoyle. Now, the Gargoyle was being an alright monster. Um, the reason why Lucas has it this slow, I believe it's probably because it's essentially not made to scare people away, not made to attack or kill or ruin anyone's business. It's just so someone can get out of what they don't want to do. Um, which uh, I don't think Lucas actually likes as a motive. And that's why the monsters got affected by it. Uh, and also it's just a bit gargoyle. So <laughs> first year place we have the Frozen Fiend. Um, Frozen Fiend up this high because of um, sheer strength, sheer willpower. But ultimately compared to the others, he doesn't, I don't think, he just doesn't like because of the fact it doesn't show much emotion. So uh, that's why he had the Frozen Fiend at first year place. 29th place. Now, I'm not happy to show this monster at 29th place. I would ha rather show a bit higher. But I'm going to have to suck it up. And uh, I am happy it's got higher than I thought it would get. But I'm still rather obsessed about it. There's no pleasing me, Lucas. No pleasing me. 29th place is the Fish Fiend. Now, obviously, I am upset that the Fish Fiend is under halfway but um i had to show a bit some gratefulness that uh, the fish fiend has been considered to be an okay monster in lucas's eyes was last year he didn't remember the monster at all hence why he had it so low on his list last year because he didn't remember anything about it um now he remembers it granted he doesn't like it as much as i do but he's grown to appreciate it as it has shown itself to be a formidable monster. Um, now, like with the Wakumi, he doesn't like the chase scene for it, which pissed me off. Um, but I'm not going to hold a grudge against it because there are some chase scenes which he likes that I don't. Uh, 28th place, we have the Titanic Twist. Now, uh... I can just say why Lucas has the mon this monster here for a simple reason. He likes it more than the Frozen Fiend. He finds it to be an iconic monster. But the reason why it's this low is because the same opinion for me. He does not like the idea of two arms being on one side of the body or the veins popping out of it. He thinks just like me that's a bit unsettling and a bit gross. 27th place, we have the Scooby Snack Monster. Very creative idea to have a monster created around um, the snack, which uh, Scooby and Shaggy feast on pretty much every day of the week. Um, however, it just fell short of the expectations we had for it. Whilst um, the Mission Machine has excelled that for us, the Scooby Snack Monster and the Mission Clones fell short of it. 26th place, we have Moto Shundu. And the reason why Moto Shundu is uh, this place for Lucas, and the same reason for me, is it's the same reason as me from, as well. It has just... Um, oh, hold on. <coughs> it's just like... Um, we expected it to be a bit more slimmer. But really, the head looks fine, it's fine. But the body is... Fat. We, uh, with the statue that was on that island, um, it was shown to be a serpentine-like monster like Sepron. Or a balisk. Or like a snake, that rather. But, um, when we got to the actual monster, the only thing that was accurate was the head. That's it. Um, so we're a bit disappointed by that. And that has affected our opinion on Moto Shandu. Whilst I think it's an alright monster... It's um, a monster which um, we don't think very highly of. 25th place is actually a shocking entry for me because I thought this would be in his top 10. But no, Leland Brothers. I was surprised by that. Um, so the Leland Brothers in 25th place because, um, well, at the end of the day, they are just ghosts. Uh, they don't do anything that stands out to um, Lucas. And I do completely agree with that. However, um, 
due to them having the series one rep uh um reputation um i would have expect i do expect it to i would have expected it to be a bit on the top half of the list but never mind um but yeah 25th place and all right place for the leland brothers they continue to fight here every night. 24th place is the Gold Monster. Now, the Gold Monster... Um, th now, the positives about the Gold Monster for Lucas and me as well is that we appreciate it doesn't show much emotion. Because that just... Um, we appreciate it doesn't show much emotion because it just um, shows to us that uh, the Gold Monster... Is always angry. Focus on what he wants to do. Like a soldier. Um, however. Like with my opinion on it. This is the worst of the secret six. Um, monsters. And when I say secret six monsters. I mean the three monsters that were shown. During the time that the secret six. Were in the episode. And we have to see the gold monster. Is the worst. 23rd place. Is the faceless phantom. Now, whilst I cannot stand this monster, Lucas does have some appreciation for it. And whilst I'm not entirely sure what the appreciation is... <laughs> he agrees with me when I say that is shouldn't be the staple of what's new Scooby-Doo. So the Faceless Phantom has a reputation of being the staple for the Series 1 monsters, or all the monsters of What's New Scooby-Doo. However, he agrees, like me, that that reputation should go to Ro the Roller Ghoster or Rufus Rockus. Maybe even the Baseball Spectre. But that's it. It does not deserve to go to that monster, but we have to deal with it because apparently very popular. Um... But um, he does like it more than I do. 22nd place, and just falling shy of the top half, we have the Space Ape. Hand me another four slices of tomato, would you, Scoob? <laughs> like, thanks. Man, Scoob, your fur's getting kind of scaly. <laughs> the alien! Now, um... I do not remember if Lucas actually told me this as his reasoning, but um, I would be surprised if he doesn't. Um, Lucas actually likes the colour combination like I do for this. Purple and green is a colour combination that should not mix well, but somehow does. Um, another reason why Lucas has it this high is because this is for, this is the first monster Lucas has seen from What's New Scooby Doo, so he has a bit of nostalgia towards it. Um, kind of like how the first monster I seen was um, was the first episode I seen. First episode in the series for me is Snow Creature. The first monster I've seen um, was actually the uh, yeah the first monster I seen was actually the San Francisco. So I have a bit of nostalgia towards that. So, um, but that's why it's up this high and just miss out of the top half. Because whilst he does have nostalgia towards it, he needs to be fair when he says that um, it, it, it doesn't do much else. 21st place, we have Gusano Grande. Long live the worm! Long live Gusano Grande! And, um... Now, Lucas obviously likes this monster more than I do, because I can't stand this monster. But um, Lucas appreciates this monster because of uh, the whole racing vibe it gives, and the fact that um, it looks intimidating for a giant worm. And whilst Grimes are given that, um, it doesn't change the fact I still hate it, because <laughs> it is just a giant worm. Um, but I can't really say my proper opinion on Gusana Grande because I do not remember what he said. <laughs> 20th place, we have the cat creature. Now, the cat creature, I'm glad to see in the top half because I thought Lucas didn't like it very much. But I think when he actually took a step back to have a to really evaluate the monster, he realized it's actually a good monster. 
because um, a cat creature at a dog show scares away the dogs is a bit of a Uno reverse card because how dogs scare away cats. Um, which is actually quite clever, in my opinion. And um, also, um, the, its abilities, especially its jumping and strength, is um, the reason why I have it as high as I do. And it's probably the reason why Lucas has it as high as he does. 19th place is the Mystery Machine. Well, like I hate to say we told you so, but... We told you so. Jeepers. Now, the Mystery Machine missed out on the top 10 for me. Uh, just barely, was for Lucas, it just barely made the top 20. Um, now, I was pretty confident that the Mission Machine would be really high for Lucas, because I know he likes it. However, um, at the end of the day, it is just the Mission Machine. Uh, there's nothing overly scary about it, but the reason why I have it as high as I do is because I like the whole creepy vibe it gives, especially the music... And the um, uh, the music that plays every time it shows up, and even the fact that it's just no one's driving. It's just a bit of a creepy thing to see at first sight, and then when it goes out of control and starts chasing you, including that bomb ass chase scene, it's a monster worth watching. Um, whilst it may not be everyone's cup of tea. Is an episode which I recommend that everyone should watch. Because it's not perfect, but it's a really good one. Uh, but with Lucas's opinion... Oops, I forgot this is Lucas's video. Um, Mission Machine, just, uh, just, just there. Just there. Um, it did have its creepy vibe, but other than that, I had nothing else for it. 18th place is the Headless Snowman. Shaggy. That's just a snowman. Huh? Come on, gang. It's awful chilly. Let's get inside for some Christmas cookies and cocoa. It's the headless snowman! Um, now, he may have confused the Headless Snowman with the Snow Creature, but I'm not entirely sure on. But he put the Headless Snowman in 18th place because, um, he, uh, personally, he, he, like me, does not think that the culprit should have got away with it. Because uh, he shouldn't have, because the culprit is a dickhead, to put it simply. Um, but... See, this is why Luke should have done the ranking, because he, sh he knows he's more than me. Um, he does have nostalgia towards this one, as this is, I believe, the first holiday monster he's seen. Um, but um, the headless snowman, at the end of the day, it's just a snowman that uh, doesn't do much. Just chases the gang around the village. That's it. Um, 17th place, we have the skeleton driver. Fred's lost control of his car! He'll lose control of his stomach when he sees what I've got planned for him. Wanna know the best way to shave weight off a car, Fred? A crash diet! Now, the skeleton driver, um, was being just an okay monster, in my opinion, if anything, a bad one. Um, to Lucas, it's the best robot related monster or one of the best robotic monsters as um obviously lucas has some attachment towards it uh because it's one of few from series three that he actually remembers but um also because he sympathize sympathizes i can't say the word with the culprit um which i respect but i do not agree with uh, 16th place is the snow creature. Daphne, get out of there. The creature's coming. It's coming! What did you say? I didn't catch that. Jeepers! I 
think I just got the message. Now, the snow creature was my first episode that um in the series for me. Uh, not the first episode I watched, but the first episode of the series for me. Um, now, whilst I would happily say it's not the best monster, and I would not put it this high, I do understand why Lucas puts it up this high, because it has... Well, A, it's a classic monster from What's New Scooby-Doo, and B, it has a, um, a segment to it. <laughs> Okay, guys, don't panic. Remember, there's a good chance it's just a terrifying monster suit with some creep inside. There's only one thing missing from your theory, Fred. What? Like the creep inside! Oh! Okay, there's nothing in there. Because there isn't. Um, Which is an iconic scene for me, and hence why I have Snow Cre the Snow Creature where I have it on my list. And it's probably the reason why he has it on his list. Fifteenth uh, place, we have the zombie gladiator. Whilst I'm not very fond of this monster, L Lucas, however, um, had d was forced by himself to put it up this high, because um, even though he's not the biggest fan of this monster, he has to give credit where it's due, as it's one of the most um, uh, dedicated monsters. Very intimidating. Very strong. And probably one of the hardest ones for the gang to actually beat. Which um, I do agree with. But because that wasn't a fact so which I took into my ranking, I didn't have to listen to it. Uh, 14th place, we have the Menacing Metallic Clown. Now, Lucas, ha he's probably going to hate me if I say this. Um, I think Lucas has a fear of clowns. And if he does, then... Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, but um, I do appreciate that he puts up this high because even though he does have a fear of clowns, this clown is terrifying uh, or menacing, as it's said. Um, and I do appreciate that uh, he puts it up this high because of its intimidation factor. But um, that's all that I believe he said about the menacing metallic clown. First in place, we have the to toxic terror. Now, um, like with um, a couple other monsters, Lucas has some nostalgia towards this monster, which I do completely respect, and I remember it as well, as the one episode which Fred, Daphne and Velma were not in. Um, but anything else to say about the Toxic Terror, apart from it's just a great design overall, and abilities, it's one... The abilities, according to Lucas, is one where if they all got into a fight, the Toxic Terror would probably win. Which, um, to an extent, I kind of agree but disagree mostly. Because, in my opinion, if all the monsters got into a fight, and no, I'm not doing a tournament with these monsters, um, I would personally think the Glassboro Dragon or the... Um, uh, yeah, the Glass Red Dragon or the, God forbid, the Dinosaur Spirit would win. Um, because they're relatively large. They um, also have a great strength. And Glass Red Dragon's case, it can fly. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but that's my opinion. <laughs> Twelfth place, we have the Chinese Dragon. Now, the Chinese Dragon, um, for Lucas, he originally, well, and it still is. For Lucas, this was and still is his least favourite reptilian monster of the three reptilian-like monsters, which are, of course, the Chinese Dragon, the Dinosaur Spirit, and the Glassboro Dragon. Whilst this is Lucas's least favourite, it's gone up a lot more from when he lasted the list and only making it into the top 12, which isn't that bad at all. Um, whilst I personally prefer the Chinese dragon over the dinosaur spirits, I, um, I would never have these monsters up as high as Lucas has them. So it does go show that Lucas does appreciate the Chinese dragon, and I think it comes with the chase scene along with rewatching the episode as well. 
11th place is another monster which I'm surprised didn't make it into the top 10 and just fallen shy of it. I'm really surprised it didn't make it into the top 10. And it's the dinosaur spirit. It's huge! It's scary! It's right in your lap! JJ Hakimoto brings you Gigantosaurus 3D! But coming soon, G3D2! The pandemonium continues! And next time, it's personal. <laughs> the previews are my favorite part! Shh! What are you doing? Those are the bones of El Oloroso. You cannot take them away. Watch me, mate. But they are sacred to these people. Whoever disturbs the bones will be struck by a terrible curse. A curse? Get real. Whilst I honestly do not like this monster. You have a lot to answer for, my friend. Lucas adores it. And um, something that I didn't really understand is that I do not know how Lucas adores it. Because I understand they may have nostalgia towards it and it's a... <laughs> it's a motherfucking dinosaur! Um, but, um... For it to miss out on the top 10, that just caught me off guard. I was not ready to see the Dinosaur Spirit not make it to the top 10. Because um, I was ready to see it in probably 8th place, maybe 7th. But no, 11th. Okay. But um, yeah, obviously Lucas does have some attachment to it because of nostalgia and also because of um, probably the chase scene, because he liked the chase scene. Uh, tenth place is a monster which I like more than Lucas, is the Baseball Spectre. I'm warning you! Try to break my record, and everyone shall suffer! <laughs> Now, the Baseball Spectre is a monster which Lucas vaguely remembered when we first, before we watched this episode. And, um, whilst, um, I was a bit confused why he doesn't remember the monster very well. Uh, something I didn't tell him, I didn't remember the chase scene. Uh, because, uh, the chase scene was stupidly short. Um, until we rewatched the episode, I was so disappointed by the chase scene. Um... But um, the baseball respect I always remembered for is Sinister Laugh, the background music, and even the fireballs. Um, and that's probably why Lucas has it up as high as it does, because of its laugh, the music that plays in the background, and also the fireballs. But that's it for the baseball respect, pretty much, because I don't know what else I could say about it. Ninth place, and really surprising is up this high, is the robot scarecrows. <laughs> Now, I say really surprising because they're just average to me. But to Lucas, they are 
gods. Now, I know why Lucas has it up as high as uh, he does. And that's because he has a bit of a nostalgia towards um, Jeepers Creepers, which I have not seen, but um, has a, a farmer horror vibe to it. And seeing a robot scarecrow is probably um, igniting memories of that for Lucas. So that's why he has it in the top nine. Well, eighth place, I know exactly why it's this high. It's Pharaoh Scamsies. Now, um, with uh, Pharaoh Scamsies, it comes with two very iconic shots of it. Um, and one is uh, where it's just stood on the top of the pyramid in the mist of the moon at night. And it's just looking down on the gang of Melbourne O'Reilly with an awesome pose. And the second one, during the chase scene, it rips off its headpiece and just roars at Shaggy and Scooby before they sink into the floor. Pharaoh Scamsies. Was is a monster I did not originally think highly of because it's just a mummy. I'm not a big fan of those. It's a brilliant monster. Um, now, I don't normally say this about the mummy or classic monsters, but um, this mummy in particular is a mummy which sticks out to me and I honestly love. And same with Lucas, apparently. Seventh place is the Ghost of Rufus Rockers. Now, um, apart from the whole uh, magic vibe it gives, uh, now I am taking, I am using my own words to and put them in Lucas's mouth here. I would argue to Lucas, this is the baseball specter on steroids, um, because this uh, monster was um, just being. Um, was having its own uniqueness about it with the whole magicness and all that. With the fire javelins, let's say, that's something that um, the base respecter gets one-upped on, which has common abilities, but gets one-upped on, hence why I said on steroids. <clears throat> Lucas does have nostalgia towards this monster, and... If you're keeping track, this is actually his second favourite monster of Series 1 of What's New Scooby-Doo. Which I do respect as an opinion. However, for me, it'll probably be third or fourth place. Now, or, or fifth maybe, I don't know. Sixth place, we have the Roller Ghoster. Now, the Roller Ghoster is Lucas's favourite of Series 1 of What's New Scooby-Doo. And uh, for this one, it's because it's such a red heron, or a green heron, should I to say. Ooh, never go for green herring, man. It isn't fresh. Um, because it's so... Because all the clues that I found in this episode was linked to one particular person to being the culprit. So obvious, in fact, where it just became... Where it just seems clear it's someone else. And, um... The fact is, though, the thing that draws it down, um, only so slightly, though, is because of um, the suspects. We have Chris, we have Terry, which are the theme park owners, the um, camera guy, I do not remember his name, and I do not really care. This is Harry Harrison, crusading reporter for This Ride Stinks.com. I'm webcasting from the Thrill Rides theme park, talking to Chris about persistent rumors that the park is haunted. Chris? It's not haunted, you muckraking loser. Um, who was just trying to um, interview Chris just to find uh, negative things about the theme park to make it close down, which I do not know why, but he's a dickhead, so why does I care? Sir? Sorry, call me Sam. I'm the safety engineer. When the rides aren't up to snuff, I shut them down. And that's been happening a lot lately? Yeah, since that gremlin of a ghost started showing up. Ghost? Well, folks call it the roller ghoster. Never seen it myself. I never cared for these newfangled extreme rides anyway. Bungee jumping, thrashing, skydiving. And what is fun about that? Because skydiving is awesome! Until the fan breaks. That's the problem. They're too dangerous, too high-tech. The old classic rides were better. 
Oh, I used to enjoy seeing the kids on Mr. Snail's brisk walk. Sam? Now, this was a good ride. It was real fun for the kids. Safe, too, if they didn't jump around too much. Uh, they don't make them like this anymore. Aha! That's why you did it, isn't it? What? You hate new rides. It would be easy for you to sabotage them. It's not him, Fred. I know it is. <clears throat> it's not. Oh, my bad. And, of course, we have little Eddie. What do you mean you have to be at least this tall to ride? Yeah. I don't make the rules, kid. Sorry. What do you mean I'm too short? How tall do you have to be to stand in a ball? Sorry, kid. Not as sorry as you're gonna be! Why, 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 why? Too short, little man. Go play on the bumper cars. I'll get even. You'll see. You'll all for the gang and for me and Lucas, he was straight away eliminated as the suspect for the simple reason. So how come I wasn't a suspect? You're too short to wear the costume. Oh man. Yeah, it was pretty obvious it wasn't him. But um, yeah, was I was mean? What I don't, I can't speak for Lucas, but was I originally thought it was also Chris? Um, it it wasn't until I rewatched it where I realized there were so many hints hinting towards him, her, where it had to be someone else. Give me that, it's mine. I didn't do it, it's just my wrench. Which is unfortunately something which, um, I didn't spot, but, um, Lucas probably did, I don't know. Fifth place is the San Francisco. <laughs> Now, the San Francisco, for me and Lucas, is an instant memorable monster. The first moment you see him, a great shot. Second moment you see him, he's uh, ruining uh, someone's chance of winning the skateboard competition. And then you've got the chase scene, which is utterly brilliant. It's intimidating. Seaweeds can be used to trap people. And also, um, the hook is terrifying as well. And um, I think it's just the fact that, um, in my opinion, it's a great monster. And in Lucas's opinion, it's a fantastic monster. For me and Lucas, we both had it in fifth place. So I can't really say that um, who likes it more, because we both do. And the San Francisco is actually Lucas's third favourite of season two. So with the remaining four, we got... Uh, the top two uh, monsters from Series 1 and Series 2 of What's New Scooby-Doo. No, Series 2 and Series 3. Fourth place. Well, I'm actually not going to say the monster's name. If Lucas is watching this on uh, when I upload this, and which I will be listening as private until Lucas edits, it, edits that clip in for the roller coaster, I want him to edit in... The clip coming up for this monster, and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show it. Who wander in the highlands, carols into the fair. We're off to Glasborough Castle. They say there's treasure there. They say there is a treasure within the castle wall, but no one's ever found it and lived to sound the call. For those who seek their fortune have only met the flame of a thousand year old dragon. Oh, Glassy is her name. For a picture with the fearsome Glasboro Dragon. Fourth place is the Glasboro Dragon. Now, the Glasboro Dragon is an instant classic for a monster for me and Lucas. Whilst I originally hated the monster, I grow I grown to appreciate it through the episode not being as bad as I originally thought it was. The chase scene being fantastic. And also um, 
The fact it's a dragon. Come on. Um, if there's anything else to say about the glass red dragon, um, it's just the fact that um, I honestly wish it was a, it was in a movie instead of an episode, because I think it would have done great as it. But um, Lucas has been on the glass red dragon. Well, it has its own theme for Christ's sake. Um, he also likes the chase scene, not so much as I do, might I add. Um, <laughs> but, um, he also likes it for the same reasons I do, because it's a dragon. It's a goddamn dragon. You can't say no to that. Third place, we have the Creepy Keep. Oh, no. The light! It's gone! Now, like Luke, like Lucas, no, sorry, like me, the Creepy Keeper is third place. And also Lucas's second favourite monster of season three. Of what's new Scooby Doo was. Glassboro Dragon was his second favourite of season two. Uh, the Creepy Keeper, same with the San Francisco, it has a brilliant first shot, um, which is actually the thumbnail of Lucas's monster ranking. Um, which, uh, yeah, I'm a bit upset I didn't get, but I still have the Creepy Keeper as my monster ranking thumbnail. Because it's a great monster! Um, the chase scene is by far the best of season three. And me and Lucas both agree on that as well. Um, but um, another thing to say about the Creepy Keeper is that it doesn't look like a great monster. But when you realise, um, when you watch the episode and realise the whole motive behind it, it's evil. Like, um, there are some things which can cause delays, but there's also something which can cause in death. The Creepy Keeper does both. Because the the reason what he does is that he turns off the light. He turns off the lights of the lighthouse, causing the ships that deliver the precious cargo that does not have the culprit's um, materials. Um, it The ship would just flat out stop, go back and come back in the morning. Or, worse, the ship would keep going on hit some sharp rocks, the ship would sink, destroying all the cargo, and probably killing the people on that ship. The Creepy Keeper is the re that motive, along with everything else I said about the Creepy Keeper, is why me and Lucas have it so high, and respect it so much. Because it is... Uh, now, I say this a lot with most of the monsters here, but this one is a proper monster. Um, second place is, oh, now this is where Luke's, Lucas and I opinions differ, because second place is Demon Farmer. Now, whilst the Demon Farmer is my favourite of What's New Scooby-Doo, it is Lucas's second favourite. Which is something which I can't really say is a bad choice by Lucas, because the Demon Farmer, whilst being a great monster, does have its slight flaws. But so does the num his number one. But um, the thing is, though, about the Demon Farmer, it's a straight-up great monster. Whilst um, it has it sets an immediate first impression for me and Lucas, just coming out of the cornfield with mist and fog all around, just raising up the scythe, intimidating. And then of course we have that Jeepers Creepers link that um, like the robot Scarecrow has that Lucas has to the Demon Farmer. 
it's something which um obviously which I can't experience myself, but if I ever do, it would just make the demon farmer go from number one to number one. Either way, the demon farmer is staying at my top spot. Um But the demon farmer it has a bloody tractor. Um I like it as well for its chase scene. Whilst Lucas is not as fond of the chase scene as I am, I think he still appreciates that the chase scene is not an actual chase scene. Um, something different. Something to spice up. Spice up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Demon Farmer, number two. I'm not even going to say I disagree with his opinion because number one, the Invisible Man Man. Quit it! Sorry. I told you to knock it off! I didn't do anything. Guys? It's also very good. Um, now, the Invisible Man Man was actually my number two uh, in my monster ranking. So, that's why I don't really um, disagree with Lucas here for his opinion. But, um, something I will say about the Invisible Man Man, even though it's still number two for me, I have a bit of a, a bit more of a stronger attachment to it. Because, um, on Friday, the 29th of October, um, I had work that day. And for that, we had to go to work dressed up as a, a something, as a Halloween related character. So, with the limited amount of money I have, spending a total of five pounds, I went as the Invisible Man from uh, the 1933 version of the Invisible Man. Whilst the costume is very cheap, it was actually one of the most unique costumes there were. And um, no one, apart from three people, actually knew what the character was. Uh, which is honestly really funny to me. Because uh, I picked a character which not everyone knows. Uh, they kept thinking I was a mummy or just um, a spaz. Um, I mean, I would have accepted those, but I had to be politically correct. 1933 version of the Invisible Man. But with the Invisible Man Man here, it has proven itself to be... A terrifying monster. Because um, one thing more scary than a monster that you can see is a monster that you can't see. And because you just never know when the Invisible Man Man is, he could be tormenting you right now. He could be just right behind you, looking over your sh sh shoulder, just seeing me talk about him, trying to warn you to look behind you! Uh, that is, of course, a really funny joke, which I just thought off the top of my head, which, um, hopefully it works. If, if it did, sorry that I scared you, but on the other hand, no, I'm not. Um, now, something else I need to say about the Invisible Man Man. The chase scene for this one is Luke's favourite of Season 2, and my second favourite of Season 2, from that chase scene ranking I did. I do not know if the opinion has changed, and if it has, okay, so be it. But the that the uh the ghosts of you and me, and uh, you don't mean anything to me, are both bang up great songs and great chase scenes, um. And Lucas can agree with me here because this was that was his top two for the chase scenes as well. So, um, so even though our opinion may differ with a lot of things, when it comes to the monsters, our top five are pretty similar. And when it comes to the chase scenes, our top two for season two are essentially the same, just swapped around. Um, me and Lucas may disagree with a few things, but there are some things which we both agree with. And I think with the monsters, especially the top two, they are easily the best of what's new Scooby-Doo. But with that being said, that's all for this time. If you like what you saw, leave a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe, press the notification bell down below, and I'll see you next time.